Now, what is happening here is Moses is leading people with motion sickness. He is leading people with motion sickness. I don't have much motion sickness, but my wife has a lot of motion sickness. She can ride in a car most of the time, but maybe not in the back seat. She doesn't do well on a boat, so a cruise is a challenge because motion makes her sick. It's called motion sickness. And if she doesn't take some medicine, she can't take a boat ride because of motion sickness. And most of us are leading people who have motion sickness. Moses is leading people who haven't moved for 430 years. And now he's got them living on the road. And the very fact that they have motion sickness makes them difficult to move. And Moses is a leader, and the only metric of leadership is movement. If he doesn't move, he's not a leader. But if he moves them, they're going to have motion sickness because they have not moved for 430 years. They have spiritual atrophy. Most churches have spiritual atrophy. Atrophy is when you haven't moved something in so long, it ceases to move without pain. Most churches have spiritual atrophy. No, we've always done it like that. You always sing the song before you read the prayer. Deacon Wilson always takes up the offering. That's atrophy. Anytime people start talking about always and they worship normalcy more than they worship movement, it becomes difficult to lead them because they're uncomfortable with change. And Moses has the dubious task of trying to move people who have spent 430 years being motionless. So the Bible says that they were moved by God from place to place. And anytime God has you moving from place to place, you're leading through uncertainty. You don't know what's going to happen next. Reading their journey is like reading a good movie. One moment they're fighting Amalek at Rephidim, and the next moment they can't find any water. The next chapter you turn over into, the snakes are coming out and biting them. And the next chapter you turn into, to, God has covered them with a cloud of fire to keep them warm at night. And the moment you get used to the cloud of fire, he has turned into a pillar of smoke by day. And then you turn past the next chapter and they come to a place filled with palm trees and fresh water. And you walk on a little further and they come to a dry place. And every time they kept moving, they kept blaming Moses because they had motion sickness they had moved for 430 years. Some of you listening at me right now have not changed in 20 or 30 years. And now this pandemic is driving you crazy because it's forcing you to have to move and you're uncomfortable because you have spiritual atrophy and you keep waiting for God to make it like it was. And success for you is for God to take you back to what you're used to. But I came to tell you that God has closed up the Red Sea and you can't go back to what it was. You must adapt to what it is, what it is, what it is, what it is, what it is. You got you to gotta adapt to what it is, not what it was, not what it will be. You got to adapt to what it is, what it is. Am I talking to somebody today? See, the, the, most of us are trying to manage people. You got wives trying to manage husbands. You got husbands trying to manage wives. You've got parents trying to manage children. You got people trying to manage life. Most of us are trying to manage people. You're upset with people because they won't be managed. They won't do what you tell them to do. They won't go where you tell them to go. God does not call you to manage people. He calls you to lead people. Once God calls you to lead people, he will call you to manage procedures. I was talking to a lady, Patricia Howroyd, and she almost knocked me out of my chair with this point. You manage procedures, you lead people. 
We don't spend enough time managing procedures. We as preachers are so busy making sermons, we don't want to be bothered with procedures. And long after the sermon is over, the church has to live with the procedures. And now the pandemic has come to preachers who spend all their time studying for the sermon and they get the sermon so that they can move people and they're not used to managing procedures. That means that you've got to be willing to tweak your procedures. That means you've got to be a person who stops saying, this is just how I do it. This is just how I am. This is just the way it is. You cannot fall in love with the procedure. The procedure's got to be willing to change so that the results can increase. Who am I talking to? The procedures have got to be willing to change so that the results can increase. That's why you take your car for a tune-up, so that you can adjust the procedures to increase the performance. You have no more performance than you have willingness to adjust the procedures. In other words, if you always do what you've always done, you will always be where you've always been. Not because you didn't have a vision, not because you didn't want to go forward, but because you refuse to change the procedures. If you don't change the procedures, you can't have the promotion.